الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد. Supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one of the most beneficial and pleasing forms of ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in the uh, Qala subhanahu wa إِلَّا الَّذِينَ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ عِبَادِهِ سَيَدْخُلُونَ جَهَنَّمَ دَاخِرِينَ That the person who is arrogant in his worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is arrogant by not supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be of the inhabitants of the hellfire وَإِيَادًا بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلَكَ So dua is especially important for us in order to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and especially for those people who are fasting and during those special times uh, when our supplications are accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we also know that supplication is ibadah. That when we supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is ibadah. This is a, a great form of ibadah. And that this ibadah is only directed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, a dua huwa ibadah, as collected in Tirmidhi. And this Hadith illustrates for us that supplication only goes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because if something is ibadah, it only goes to Allah and ibadah to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is shirk which is a form of polytheism. So, getting back to the hadith at hand which shows us the fadl and the benefit of dua, this is the hadith uh, that was collected in, uh, this is the hadith in, uh, that's a sound hadith that was uh, Collected in uh, by Imam Ahmed in his Musnad, also by Ibn Abi Shaiba wa Hakim. And this is the hadith of Abu Sa'id or Abi Sa'id al Khudri, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a call Ma min Muslim yid'u, laysa bi ithmin, wala bi kati'ati rahim, illa atahu ihda thalaf. إِمَّا أَنْ يُعَجِّلَ لَهُ دَعْوَتَهُ وَإِمَّا أَنْ يُدَاخِرَهَا لَهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ وَإِمَّا أَنْ يَدْفَعَ عَنْهُ مِنْ السُّوء مِثْلَهَا قال إِذَا نُكْثِرْ قال اللَّهُ أَكْثَرْ So in this hadith, which is the hadith of Abi Sa'id al-Khudri رضي الله تعالى عنه He said that the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم said that there isn't a Muslim that supplicates. And in his supplication, there is no sin contained in it. And there is no asking to cut the ties of kinship. Except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will uh, give him or answer his dua in one of three ways. Either he will give it to him, uh, quickly answer his supplication in this life, or he will save it for the hereafter, that the, the reward will be in the hereafter, or it will be answered in the hereafter, or that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove a harm in this life, meaning something that was going to, uh, some musiba, some trial or something that was going to befall you by your supplication your supplication will defend or, or protect you from that that trial or that evil or that harm then Ibn Nis'u uh, uh, Abi Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu ta'ala he said then we will increase you know Eden Nukthir then we will increase we'll increase in our supplication the Prophet sallallahu said Allahu Akthar that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is even more, you know, more accepting. So, this hadith gives us many, many benefits, especially it points to us, uh, uh, lets us know that, that the dua is ibadah, and dua is incredibly important if you want to, and your dua will be answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And... 
another benefit contained in this hadith is that there should be ikhlas that you must have sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when making supplication and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran in this regard فَدْعُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِسِينَ اللَّهُ الدِّينَ Supplicate to Allah with sincerity and for Him is the religion. And some of the other conditions for dua that we learn from this hadith is that your supplication should not contain any sin. You should not supplicate for something sinful. Oh, I, I want this and it's something sinful. Oh, I wish I had some interest from my uh, bank loan. Or I wish I had, uh, you know, something haram, something that is prohibited by Islam. And also another condition for our supplication is that we should not pray for something, uh, and this is included in being sinful, is that we should not pray for cutting off the ties of kinship. But, but rather we should supplicate, and part of our supplication being answered is that we maintain the ties of kinship with your family, with your uh, uh, kinsfolk. Another benefit from this hadith is that our, our supplications will be answered in a variety of different ways. And that can either be, as was mentioned in the hadith, that it can be in this life, it can come, your supplication can be answered in this life. If you pray for wealth, you pray for a marriage, you pray for something that you, you need, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may give it to you in this life. Or, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may give it to you in the next life. It may be something that you get and it may increase your reward in the hereafter. Or, the third way is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may use it to prohibit a calamity that was going to befall you. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from any and all forms of calamity. And in another narration, which also has the same meaning, this hadith has some weakness in it, but the meaning is sound and it is strengthened by the other hadith this was the hadith of Abi Huraira رضي الله تعالى عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال ما من مؤمن ينسب وجهه لله إلى الله يسأله مسألة إلا عطاه إياها إما عجلها له في الدنيا وإما داخرها له في الآخرة ما لم يعجل قال يا رسول الله وما عجلته قال يقول دعوت ودعوت ولا أراه يستجاب يستجاب لي سبحان الله. The this hadith is very similar in the uh, to the to the narration we already mentioned, but the last part of this hadith differs, and it and the Prophet ﷺ was asked, O Messenger of Allah, uh, the Prophet ﷺ explained that uh, the the supplication would be answered in those ways that we mentioned previously except that he added in this hadith that as long as a person is not um, a person is not in a hurry or you know abandoning hope in their dua and then they said oh messenger of Allah and what is this uh, abandoning hope or what is this way in which that a person becomes impatient so the Prophet ﷺ responded by saying, is when a person says, I supplicated and I supplicated and I don't believe that he will answer me. So this is a way in which we despair in our supplication and that weakness affects us all in, uh, or affects many of us in our supplication. So we can't give up hope. So, that, so what we learn from this narration is that we should not abandon hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but rather we should realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of His infinite grace and mercy will answer us and will, uh, and that we have hope in our supplications. So never give up hope and never despair in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in another uh, hadith narration while we're on this topic of dua that shows us the benefit of the dua is a hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu and a Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal Laysa shay'un akrama ala Allahi min a dua this hadith, uh, Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that there isn't a thing which has, which is considered more uh, important 
to Allah than the supplication. So this shows us the fadl, the benefit, and the importance of supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that Allah regards this as something important, and supplication is ibadah, it is worship, and that those people who worship graves, who supplicate to the dead, who supplicate to intercessors, even if it is a great sheikh that is alive today or one who is deceased, that that is ibadah and that is shirk. So we have to know and we have to tell our Muslim brothers and sisters, those people who are involved in those various types of ibadah, that hey, you can't do that. You can't supplicate to uh, Sheikh Nasser, a Naqshbandi, or uh, any of those uh, other, other Sufi sheikhs, or any sheikhs, or any people of benefit. You cannot supplicate to anyone. Your supplication goes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And we must tell our brothers and sisters who supplicate to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that hey, this is not permissible, this is shirk. Because we know from the many ahadiths and we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, considers uh, supplication is ibadah. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, a dua huwa ibadah. That dua is ibadah. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has let us know throughout the Quran that supplication is a form of worship that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts from us and that if you supplicate to other than Allah that this is shirk no matter what form it is because how can you discern yourself from the Christians and how can you speak and say that their worship is wrong when they supplicate to Jesus and you make a distinguishment you say no 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 but I'm supplicating to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam no all of this and may Allah be uh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon all the prophets and messengers uh, Jesus alayhi salatu wasalam, and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, but none of them have share in divinity with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and none of them have the right to be worshipped along with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad